Anyway, uh, let's welcome in Allison Me. And, and Bill, this is uh, 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 Allison's with the Stubblefield Institute. I think you're aware of this organization. I am aware of this organization. And uh, very quickly, the organization is, is designed to uh, promote civility, so promote civility across the board. We have a, uh, some students uh, very active uh, in the program, and we view them as the potential leaders, uh, and they've taken civility very serious. Uh, a component of the Institute is to do outreach to the community, and that's what Alice will be talking about today. We have a, an event coming up at the end of this month that if uh, once Allison starts describing the panelists and the uh, moderator, I think you'll be excited about it. It all is embedded in the fact that we need as a community, as a country, as a nation to, to treat each other more civil. There's a lack of that now, and we need to kind of start the trend back going the other way. And these, these outreach sessions, these uh, discussion groups that we have with, fairly, with very impressive individuals, I hope will start moving us that direction. And, and Bill, would uh, civility include calling the host a dummy for not readjusting his camera when he went uh, to sit back down? I mouthed the words. I did not. <laughs> nobody could hear me say that. Or lambasting an author for not sending out a free, That's fair a free game. book. That's fair game. <laughs> <laughs> Allison, good morning. Welcome in. Good morning. Glad to be here. You mentioned you had been here prior under a previous title. Uh, yes, I was here a couple of years ago when I was with On Track Anti Drug Coalition. Yes. Well, very nice. Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah. Glad to be here now with the Stubblefield Institute. You are the communications manager. Yes, communications and events manager. So I'm mm -hmm. very excited to be here to talk about some of the events that we have coming up this month. We actually have two uh, big mm -hmm. events coming up this month. Oh, um, let's get to yeah. them. What, what's your first Great. one? So the one um, January 25th is going to be a return to our American Conversation Series and this is very uh, very exciting because these this is where we have our nationally relevant conversations that that are just very obviously clear for the whole nation things that are really important and we are going to have a panel discussion let me just get to who we're going to have there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have E.J. Dion from the Washington Post and uh, Ed Goaz, who is a, uh, you may be familiar with, he's a Republican pollster and mm -hmm. uh, was the CEO and president of the Terrence Group. And he wrote a book uh, that is called um, A Question of Respect, Bringing Us Together in a Deeply Divided Nation. And yeah, good luck on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'm going to let me just go quickly through the list and then I'll tell you about sort of the nature of this conversation. So we're also going to have Lewis L. Reed, who's the chief narrative officer for Decoded Story Lab, which is a new project. And he has also been with Jay-Z's Reform as their chief strategist. And it's going to be moderated by Sam Goldman, who's the executive director of the John Loeb uh, Jr. Institute for Religious Freedom and um, He's the director of the Politics and Values Program at George Washington University. Okay. So this uh, conversation is going to be overcoming division, strategies for standing united. Because we make a lot of assumptions, I think each of us, about what is the best way to stand united with our neighbors. You know, we, we have a lot of different identities in the United States in a lot of different ways. That, that can mean many things. And how do we stay together as a community across our entire nation and we all have ideas of how that is supposed to be so we've brought in some experts who have really been thinking about this all their lives and uh, assisting people with this all their lives and they are going to have a fantastic conversation on january 25th at the frank center and what time will that start that will be at 7 p.m uh, it's going to be live in person and there's lots of space there at the frank center so we do hope people will come because it is a nationally relevant conversation, it will also be broadcast live on our YouTube channel, the Stubblefield Institute YouTube channel. Is there an admission charge? It is not. There is. It's free, but you do need to get tickets. Uh, they're available on Eventbrite now. All right. Bill, you are about to say. Yeah, I was going to say uh, the, the, it is free, and we encourage you to do it. If you need more information, you can also always go to the Stubblefield Institute webpage, and it will lead you through how to do this. A point that, uh, uh, that we need to emphasize is that this day and time, uh, people tend to look at people with an R or D behind their name, uh, which I think is one of the roots of our problem that we, we polarized everything we're talking about. Stubblefield Institute is 
committed to trying to present a balanced approach. We will never have a hard over uh, progressive or by himself or a hard over conservative by himself. Uh, we look for folks that can see a broader picture, but even that broader picture, we try to balance between someone that leans uh, to the left or leans to the right, such as a couple of our panelists, Dion and Goose, are, are both in that category. Dion is uh, right for the post as an editorial writer, opinion piece writer. He tends to lean to the to the left somewhat. I've read his stuff for many years. Yeah, uh, as we all have. Uh, he's uh, he's very articulate and very persuasive. So he was when we first started talking about this, he was one of the ones that we wanted to get that we spent uh, kind of like a full court press to get him to uh, uh, to agree to it he was the first one along with Lewis Reed who works with Van Jones if you're familiar with Van Jones uh, Van Jones is uh, uh, is on CNN quite a bit. Uh, he's on t uh, several talk shows, a lot of influence. He also was identified recently by um, uh, by the money coming from uh, Jeff Bo uh, Bezos. Bezos Group as uh, given a huge amount of money unencumbered for Van Jones to continue his work in promoting understanding among various groups and and van did that documentary work he, with uh, doug copenhagen he did exactly right yeah. and lewis reed was very much involved with that uh van was a point man uh but lewis reed was the uh the instigator behind the scenes that did a lot of work tying it together um i i know uh, uh and sam goldman i've not I do not know, except he comes highly, highly recommended by those folks that's in the academia, uh, that he's, uh, uh, how knowledgeable is coming to the narrative of let's work together. So I think it's going to be a very exciting program. That's January 25 at the Frank Center. What time, Allison? 7 p.m. You must get tickets, but there's no admission charge. No that's correct. You get them at Eventbrite. And your, your second event this month. Our second event is going to be a um, part of our communication, um, excuse me, community engagement conversations. And so this is where we have local folks uh, who are leaders in our community to discuss topics that are relevant to the region. And so this one is going to be uh, labels limiting or leveraging. Uh, these are all part of our, um, what we're doing this year is in cooperation with uh, the West Virginia Community Foundation, I'm sorry, one of our sponsors is the Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation, and the other one is uh, Skinner uh, Accident and Injury Law Firm. Mm -hmm. But the, um, the West Virginia Humanities Council is working with us to bring in the United We Stand Connecting Through Culture Initiative, and that is going to be uh, bringing us both the event we just spoke of, and this one is lim lim Labels. Limiting or leveraging. I'm sorry. We like all those L's when we plan them. Sometimes they do trip, though. And this is on Wednesday, January 31st at uh, 5.30 p.m. And this is in the store ballroom, also at Shepherd University. Both of these events are at Shepherd University. This one starts at 5.30 p.m. And because it's part of our community engagement series, there will be an opportunity for conversation, like structured conversations beforehand, talking about labels. And so... For this one, we're going to have the, the panelists are uh, Margarita Garita Cortez from Telemon. She's their housing program coordinator. We've had her on the show a few times. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. And uh, Dr. Uh, Chiquita Howard Bostic at Shepherd University, who is a professor of sociology and the vice president of diversity, equity, and inclusivity. And Dr. Lindsay Levitan, who's an associate professor of social and applied behavioral sciences. Uh, who is going to be talking a lot about, you know, the brain, human brain aspect of labels and why do we use them? How do we use them? Why do they keep coming up? So we're going to talk about uh, how they can be harmful, but also how they can be helpful because it's just part of how people think. No, give me I mean, an example. <clears throat> give me an example of a label. What are we talking about here? Uh, Democrat, Republican, it man, be, woman, yes, liberal, it conservative. It can be Democrat, Republican. It can be um, any kind of ethnic group, gender. Um, uh, dummy, even just... dummy is a label we heard earlier <laughs> in this segment. And how appropriate at times. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but it was mouth. It wasn't yeah. vocal. I think I, it was not vocalized. I think I heard it. I'm pretty sure I heard it. 
Okay, I just yeah. no, no. threw Allison off there. Bill. Yeah, no, actually, it's there is uh, some breadth to this, so we can talk about uh, labels that are legal definitions. You know, that somebody may be able to check off on a census or things that uh, we're bringing in Telemon. One of the things I thought was interesting was to bring in the conversation about how, um, you know, in policy, how public money is distributed, how people may be um, supported in various ways. Um, I, I, I always try to bring it back to the policy. We always at the Stubblefield Institute are interested in civility, but that's not just, you know, civility the kindness, being nice to each other, respectful kind of thing, but also how do we then allow the civility to support policy? And so thinking about that. The whole concept of labels I find really interesting. Years ago, I taught a course called Truth and Labeling. And the whole notion that we all carry labels, some are self-inflicted, some are inflicted upon us, but there's the who, the person that we know we are, and then there's the person we project to be, and that's those are conflicting labels at times. And there are those, to really get in, in opposition to those, it's what people project onto us. So the whole business of, of labeling is, is an interesting topic. It's and very quite fluid, depending on mm -hmm. how you come at it. Yeah. Sure. The, these two topics, these two uh, events, are structured differently. Uh, the first from American Conservation Series uh, will have the panel discussion. Then there will be opportunity for the uh, audience to ask questions via a moderator. At least I assume it will be. It's what we've had in the past. The second one, the, our, our community engagement, is just the opposite. You get together as with, with panels, small groups from the community. Last time we had several of our uh, elected officials there as well. And then they get together and define the sort of questions they would like to ask. And then those questions are asked to the panelists. So, so there's involvement from the uh, audience two different ways. The first American Conservation Conversation Series after the panelists, the first from community engagement before the panelists. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's almost like you should have Bill with you on this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> We're now, very glad we have Bill with now, us on this stuff. Now they, uh, it's the the intent is to find ways to engage the community to the maximum degree. Uh, we have found that it's uh, uh, that the community kind of likes to sit on. I'm talking in very general terms and applies everywhere, not just uh, uh, Berkeley, Jefferson County. The community likes to sit on the sidelines and kibitz, but they they need some encouragement to actually get in and take hands-on approach and become part of the of the event or the process. And that's what we're trying to do. We're we're going a couple of different ways to try to get the community involvement. We can not be happier than if we had the room filled over overflowing with everybody with their opinions everybody with their passions but the one thing that we ask and the one thing we've we've always observed is that people display their passions in a very civil manner and in regards to parking brad no wants to know what the parking arrangements are Allison. Uh, parking will be free there at the Frank, uh, Frank Center. So that's uh, if you park on this anywhere on Shepherd Campus, like general parking after 4.30 p.m., you can come and park. And these events are not until 5.30 or 7. So you won't be so, competing with students as no, much. You're welcome to park in what would normally be the student lots. All right, Jeff Haddix has a suggestion, Allison. I would like to see a conversation on public health and COVID in regards to policies. Someone from Great Barrington Declaration who opposed most of the government policies. If I can, before, I know you asked it, Allison, we had that. I thought so. We had that uh, uh, about a year year June. or so ago, yeah. And we had uh, Marsh, Dr. Marsh, we had two or three uh, of, the PA, of the doctors and the, man, uh, the health managers in it. And that was a very good discussion. That absolutely was. That conversation was uh, very engaging, I think, on a lot of different levels. And there was definitely a lot to unpack. You know, when it's not the middle of the emergency, let's keep talking about it. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot more to explore there. A lot of research to be done. Yeah, and it was interesting. And I, we've had a, the the uh, professor, the doctor from WVU on, on WRNR on a couple of occasions, Robin, I've forgotten his name. Mm -hmm. uh, but he and Dr. Marsh, 
approach this differently. Yes. Uh, Dr. Marsh was very much in favor of vaccination and that that, was, that and also other uh, mediations such as wearing masks. This other doctor, and I'm drawing a blank on his name, took just the opposite approach. And, he viewed, and yet they're colleagues. They worked side by side at WVU and viewed this uh, the, uh, a different medical uh, driver to how to solve the problem. Allison, what other programs this year have you folks planned out that you hope to bring off? Well, I, I definitely did want to mention, so we, we work at that national level and the community level mm -hmm. and then also on campus at the student level. Uh, and one of the things that we've launched this year is our, um, our community leadership and civil advocacy certificate, which is a 50-hour certificate. But those 50 hours are completely integrated with activities on campus and increasingly also off campus in the community. So the this is currently available to all Shepherd students, regardless of major, and they can work on it throughout their entire time at Shepherd. And this is um, an opportunity for them to really practice mm -hmm. the uh, various skills that are uh, taught as part of the Listen, Learn, Engage initiative, which is part of the Stubble Stubblefield Institute, it's our student-facing programming. Bill, or, and Allison, uh, John for that matter, uh, too, I, I'm wondering if uh, you've come across examples of people having gone through these courses and maybe changed their mind on how to disagree with, uh, with people, whereas previously they may have attacked verbally, uh, and now maybe they had to do a better job of listening and understanding, maybe not agreeing, but at least understanding where that person's coming from with their point of view. Recently, there was a story of one of the students that had never been involved with engagement in the, uh, uh, with the university or engagement in anything political. She got involved with the Stubblefield Institute and became so excited about it that she wants to carry it to the next step. Uh, one of the things that the students at Shepherd are anxious to do this time is to understand more about the local local officials they and during the election process i i suspect we'll be holding more uh uh candidate forums because the students are asking for this they never have asked for it before but they're asking for it this year so there's quite a bit of interest on that level uh one thing that i uh i think has been in fact i know it's been announced uh, hans fogel which we all know and love uh will be coming to shepherd uh as head of shepherd's communication he'll not be working for the stubblefield institute but he'll be working with the stubblefield institute Yes, and he will also be continuing to um, moderate the community engagement conversation, which he mm -hmm. has done the last couple of them, and he will be doing the one on the 31st. Very good. Hans, is a, it was, he was an excellent radio man and a very good uh, uh, facilitator of events, too. He did a great job at uh, Jefferson County Board of Education. Mm -hmm. He's an all-around good person, and he's very much interested in, in promoting the health all the health and broad terms of the community. Now, in, in the early days of the Stubblefield Institute bill, there was some criticism of some of the speakers that you brought in because they might be too passionate uh, one way or the other way in their particular point of view or political viewpoint. And my counter to those complaints was that civility doesn't mean that you can't have a passionate opinion that's far left or far right. That doesn't mean you lack civility. Yeah. It's the, it's the ability to engage in conversation you could have two diametrically opposed people politically. That doesn't mean that they're not civil. There's the opportunity for civil disagreement between those political points of view, Bill, that I think was misunderstood early on with the Institute. I think so, yeah. As we as we frequently say, we do not, we're not there to, to change anyone's mind. Uh, we're not there to try to present only one side of the picture. We're there to promote the broadening of the of the mind, of the issues, but to do it in a civil manner. The situation, one of the situations I think you're referring to was our very first American Conservation Series where we had Donna Pazell and mm -hmm. Schlott, I think that's the way. Mercedes Schlott. Mercedes Schlott, yeah, who was uh, communication director for President Trump or had been President Trump's first communication director. So we had two folks diametrically opposed uh, on, on practically every issue, both of them were very passionate in the views. Uh, it was a very interesting evening because they were polite, 
They were courteous, and they they did not give up on the passion. They did not try to weaken the argument. They tried to enhance the argument, but they did it in a way that people found to be encouraging, very comfortable to listen to. That's what we want to try to do. You know, in a perfect world, <clears throat> this would live on, right? I mean, you've got a I've, I've been to one of the sessions before, and it's a safe space. It really does promote conversation on, on either side of an issue. But the reality is once we get out of, out of that room or out of academia, we're into the real world where anger sells. And that's what the media on both sides of any issue, they're, they're selling on the anger. If there is a way, maybe if we do enough of these kinds of sessions in enough places, people realize that shouting is not communicating. But shouting is what doubles as communication at all levels of the media, from from news reports to the Academy Awards. You know, it, it's just there's that that undercurrent of of anger and there is a right answer, mm -hmm. whatever yeah, it is from either side. There's only yeah. one right answer. I think because people mistake shouting for enthusiasm or passion. Yeah. Or for drowning out the other side. Well, there's that end of it, too. You know, a lot of shows like this are involved with everybody talking at one time, and the one who quits first loses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Uh, we've mentioned a couple of events today. One's uh, oriented or directed toward the community outreach. The other one's for the students. We've spent a lot of time and effort trying to get the student involvement, and uh, we've been very successful on Shepherd Campus. We have a, uh, a proposal out. We believe we're going to get funding for it. We're going to extend a lot of what we're doing on the Shepherd Camp Campus to campuses throughout the state, to other university campuses. Oh, very nice. Allison, yeah. we have about 30 seconds okay. left. So both of these events are very much for the general public. The one on the 31st is a continuation of the community engagement conversations. And then the one on the 25th is the return. We have not had an American Conversation Series event in two years. And we are having one now, and it's going to be fantastic. We look forward to seeing everybody there. Get your tickets on Eventbrite. Good to see you again, Allison. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks, Allison. Allison Mee, Communications Director and Event Planner for the Stubblefield Institute.